Hi guys, if I recall in the last uh, Core Memory video part 3, it was a quick uh, unnarrated test of the uh, the higher current drive lines, the uh, Texas Instrument H-Bridge ICs, um, testing with the LED board, and uh, I was sequentially uh, charging one address line to test uh, a row of LEDs, so that would have been uh, switching, say, for a single X line, switching a, a Y line positive and negative to light this LED, then disabling uh, the enable pin so they're both back to high impedance again, and then uh, turning on this one, positive and negative, so this LED lights, then uh, turning it back to high impedance, disabling the enable pin, and then this one, so you get a row of LEDs lighting in order. So moving on, let's pretend uh, these are no longer LEDs, but the actual ferrite cores uh, with uh, the potential to send uh, the half required current through each address line axis. And we want to write this data, which is uh, 8 bits, 1 byte, even though the project is 64-bit memory. Uh, just to simplify for this, we'll deal with a single byte, which is a one single uh, x-axis address line. So... Uh, I've got a routine set up to bitwise rotate this array. So we're going to always look at uh, bit 7 of this array. So we look at bit 7, and if the, the bit value is 1, we switch the core in this direction and this direction to write the 1, and then we rotate this bit, uh, this byte, sorry. Uh, one place, so it'll become this value. And the zero will be shifted in there from the right. So now we're going to look at this value again. When we go to uh, write the second bit, and uh, because it is still a one, we will again switch uh, the x-axis in this direction and the y-axis in this direction. Then when we rotate the bit, the byte again, sorry, we'll end up with this value. We've got a, a new bit shifted in there from the right. This time we're going to look and find an O. And because it's an O, we're going to switch the x-axis this way and the y-axis this way, and we're going to write an O. And assuming that uh, we started from a clean slate, which uh, the read operation would generally write all those and all ones. We could just skip writing the zeros and not charge the lines because this is already set to a, a zero. We could just go across and write the ones. But uh, to make every operation take the same amount of time, I've uh, simply written zeros and ones. A trap for young players. Looking at this diagram, you'd be forgiven for thinking uh, that an X addressing line uh, physically moves from left to right, and a Y addressing line uh, physically is oriented north to south or up and down. Uh, when you're building the hardware, that's true. When it comes to writing the software, you find uh, you activate what you call this X line, but to actually address uh, X bits, you use the Y line. So if you're stepping through the X axis of cores, from left to right, you're actually incrementing the index that you are addressing these Y lines. So X becomes Y and Y becomes X. And that was a, a bit of a source of confusion for me as I was going, because I was getting the two mixed up. Um, fortunately, it didn't have any, any sort of consequence really, other than just messing me up for a part of the day. The hardware's had a bit of a, some transformation now and looks deadlier with the core module in place there. Uh, there's a little shroud that I'd like to add across the ribbon cable, uh, leaving some of that copper exposed, um, but hiding the ribbon cable there. 
So it's really just a little bit of uh, shroud that, that goes across there and uh, somehow fixed to the platform. Made a brass platform there with uh, some hex shaped rail across the bottom for strength. Um, the shroud I'd like to do with some of this uh, recycled silent key project. Uh, this was at least a power supply. I might try and keep this um, 60s sort of uh, paint finish green. I'd have to cover it in lacquer and there is also some sort of close to a hammerite finish on this sheet steel as well. Or I could try um, plating it in copper. I haven't tried that before with steel. See how that goes. Now to write an entire 64 bit, uh, I'll need an 8 byte array with an example bit pattern in it and I've chosen something like this one. Uh, not quite the same, I just didn't want to use alternating bits so I wanted some recognisable uh, pattern down here. The actual one in my software is set here where I set an 8 byte array uh, with recognisable patterns, only slightly different to the last one that I showed you on paper and then uh, I have assembler routines uh, to rotate that whole 64-bit array, bitwise rotate, uh, left or right. Uh, as I was talking about before on the paper, for every step of the scan we've got to uh, bitwise rotate the entire array that we're writing. Uh, if we're going to look at the same bit each time so a new bit gets shifted in place. Either that or we could change the indexing, leave the array alone and change the indexing of where you're going to look for the bit and uh, cycle the indexing from 0 to 64 one way or another, both should work. I've made these patterns carefully, uh, no matter how you look at it, there's 32 of one bit state and 32 of another. So when our program writes this data to call memory and then uh, goes to read it back, it writes all zeros to all 64 bits and uh, looks for a sense pulse after writing each zero. And when I count the sense pulses, I should count 32. The LED test jig is uh, plugged in place of the memory module and is really only useful for testing. I guess it's no longer required. Uh, unless, of course, the memory module or the, yeah, the controller broke later on and I needed it for diagnosis or something like that. So when I first set up a processor board, I used a, a mid-range PIC 16F628A, slightly overclocked uh, to 24 megahertz. I used uh, port A bit 4 to drive the clock line, forgetting that it's an open drain uh, output and won't actually uh, drive logic high. Uh, so I did initially have a, an output indicator uh, LED which was going to be used for anything uh, on uh, port A1 I think it was so um, I was going to flash out uh, bit counts before I had a serial interface just so I could see the thing was working um, so what I did when I found out the clock pulse wasn't actually working is I connected the uh, clock pulse to the LED pin which I think was port A1 so now the LED indicator that was independent indicates uh, the clock pulse being sent to the shift registers. Uh, the cool thing is that as long as I don't latch uh, these 595 shift registers which will enable uh, the enable pins of the current drivers in, in a dormant state of the program doing nothing, waiting for serial data or, or something like that, I can just freely send zeros through this shift register chain so what I can do is, if I want to flash out a count of the LED, I can just send data low and be sending zeros in by pulsing the clock line. And uh, then I can do things like uh, flash this LED once a second and do things for indication, program indication, and it won't really matter if the zeros are getting shifted through this chain of shift registers. Uh, so long as you know, I don't latch any enable pins, uh, anything that actually does write to the memory cleans it out as it shifts the uh, 48 bits into these registers. Any zeros that are left in there are gone by the time anything happens. So I'm using this LED to, as an indicator um, to flash out numbers 
and that will be the amount of bits that changed when I wrote 64 zeros over the top of some data. To make any of this hardware happen you need a uh, highly organised workspace in an unused bathroom. Uh, lots of uh, coffee, soft drink, cigarettes. By the, uh, so this is the plan for the, the brass shroud. Uh, I'm going to go to brass now because it's thin. And punch through those points from the graph paper through to the brass and score and fold as the rest was done. The trap for young players, you'd be forgiven for thinking that once you'd gone out and got your one millimeter diameter cores that you might as well just go and buy the uh, thickest copper wire that you can fit three links through uh, one core. Then you find you go ahead and build your core matrix, uh, fix your X and Y lines, go to thread your sense lead and ba bow won't fit through. Uh, my solution was to uh, keep the 0.25mm uh, drive lines that uh, are the, the only two that are really conducting current and then just use a thinner wire for the sense line. And then it can be arranged so it fits through somehow. I had to sew it but it works. So the test program I've written for the actual core memory does exactly the same as this on the LEDs. Uh, for the first two cycles, writes all zeros and then all ones, or all ones and all zeros, depending on which is which. And then for a third cycle, writes the actual data. Back to the test program, which will later become uh, the, the controller, which will communicate with a more standard formal protocol, so the 9600 board 8N1 or something like that. Uh, at the moment just cycles through a few operations and the first one is to flash out the number of pulses that were counted to the human uh, through the LED and uh, if the count is zero we'll just have one big long pause and if anything else it will flash out here uh, the number to the human the next thing it'll do is pause so you know there's a time between the operations then it'll reset the count of, of the sense pulses write a bunch of zeros while counting the changed states um, there it is there. Then it'll write all ones for no real reason after a pause and then here it sets the data and then writes the data the 0 to 63 stepping through the bits. Then when it comes to the next cycle it'll count out the bits that have changed uh, at the start of the program here again and that's where it's actually valid. So the first time it should just say 0 and then do the clear then the data read then the writing zeros and counting out the change states and that's when it'll flash out a number that means something. All written in basic, how appropriate, uh, some assembler for the routines that needed to be fast like bit rotation and the delay uh, between the current driving and the uh, sense. A little bit too fast for basic but mostly in basic. Okay now for the demo I've got the, the phone on the stand so no more shaking and the LED we're looking at is an aqua coloured LED right here. Um, that's the clock LED so it indicates uh, the clock pulses to the shift registers and then in the uh, first program uh, operation I was talking about it is also used to flash out counts which will first be uh, zero. So here's the power up. And that was the zero count, a long pulse. And this should be writing zeros and counting pulses. So whatever was left in memory, we've got a count there. This should be writing ones. And now writing the data. Now the next count, I don't expect anything at all from because uh, it's the data that was left on the device uh, when it was powered off. Could have been switched off through a write state. So I'm not sure it really means anything. Uh, we might actually have the 32 pulses there, but uh, I'm not counting this time. It'll be the next time uh, that matters. Okay, so now we'll have the zeros. And now the ones, which will really be written for no reason. And now the data. 
now I'll count out uh, with the LED. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two. Success! Now we're going to write all zeros and delete all that valuable data. Okay. Is this the end of the project? Well, no. This is the first project that I've actually uh, blogged, mainly on Hackaday, but a few other electronics forums. But uh, where I've actually started blogging from the start, uh, before I've had anything successful. So uh, personally, it's quite it exposes you to uh, failure and showing everyone that you failed because there was no idea that I was going to know if this really worked from the start or if I was going to give up so it's a, a big commitment to actually completing it and it's also the reason why the, the project was done in modules so they could be replaced if something didn't work and fortunately that didn't have to happen uh, has the objective been achieved in that it works yes uh, completed no um, I've not yet seen a core memory used or demonstrated in a practical project, as is the idea here. I plan to store a pair of 32-bit float values representing a last known geolocation for a larger project, uh, which happens to be my atomic clock. Uh, I didn't want this to be about that because it's getting a bit old on my YouTube channel, and I think uh, the, the memory is an undertaking in itself. Um, It'll be a while before another proper uh, video from me, and I'm going to submit this to Hackaday, see if I can get a feature, uh, as it is. Um, uh, there will be a more conclusive video, though, once I've added a serial uh, protocol to talk to another computer, uh, and also uh, another demo looking at a scope of the pulse signal to, you know, I could be faking this, it could just have a built-in EEPROM doing the work, or, or the microcontroller program could have just flashed out the counts as I wanted it to. Um, but I really want a YouTube video up there uh, actually demonstrating how this works, uh, which I've only really logged a build, I haven't really shown that, and I don't know that one exists. Uh, and then uh, the thing has to be put to practical use, and I want to show it working over a serial terminal with human uh, interpreted commands, such as uh, read memory uh, or write memory, followed by the four bytes and a checksum, or eight bytes, sorry. Uh, or two floats and a checksum, uh, so, so I do want to, a video to exist where you can see someone typing into a serial terminal, uh, write this memory and give me it back. Another one would be uh, exposing the, the core memory to uh, magnetization from a permanent magnet while it was writing or before it read back, try and destroy the data. Uh, another proof, pull out the sense plug, I didn't do that for this video. Could have easily done that to um, to show that it, you know the signal from the sense receiver is required to communicate with the microcontroller to actually count pulses so the memory can work, but it wouldn't really conclusively prove anything because this little microcontroller could still be doing all the work, and really the the sense plug could just be a continuous lead, uh, just a key, so the micro can tell you uh, you know what you want to hear. Um, but that's all for now. Uh, next video I'll work a bit harder and do a proper demonstration, uh, but this is the end of the, the hardware progress uh, build sort of phase. So uh, thanks for watching, and if this video didn't make any sense, you might uh, need to watch the other, the other three, I think, that are in this uh, section. Okay, cheers, that's all for now.